In the last video, we took a look at this massive contraption, the nuclear targeting computer. This thing is by far the largest redstone weapon I've made, and yes, it is quite complicated. Today, I'm going to be breaking this thing down and hopefully helping you to understand how this massive monster works. This is the missile section. Right now, it's quite complicated and a little bit hard to understand, so let's break it down and look at some of the individual parts. The heart of the whole machine is this part up here. This is the timing circuit that allows the flying machine to stop itself when it reaches its target. It might look a little bit familiar, because I actually used this one in a previous video about the timeable missile. This whole thing is actually just a larger, faster, and better version of the timeable missile. So if you didn't know, hopper minecarts actually have a property where they get lighter when items are taken out of them. An empty hopper minecart is light enough to be able to make it to the top of this hill. However, a hopper minecart full of items is too heavy and wouldn't be able to make it to the top of the hill. Hopper minecarts also have a property where they can take items out of a hopper minecart that passes above them. This one is currently full, but if we move this other hopper minecart directly below it, it will eventually start taking items out of it until it becomes wide enough to eventually reach the top of the hill. This section right here is basically a movable version of that hill. This hopper minecart is too heavy to make it to the top of the hill, and so it will just keep going up and down and up and down. This chest minecart will constantly be feeding items into it, making it even heavier. These hopper minecarts will be taking items out of it constantly, making it lighter. Eventually, when all of the items in this chest minecart run out, then it will become wide enough to eventually reach the top of the hill, powering this detector rail up here. When the detector rail is eventually powered, that's how the machine knows it's reached its target. The first stage is the largest part of the machine, however, it is also the most simple. The whole purpose of the first stage is simply to lift the second stage up to build height. It's really simple, and is mostly just pistons with observers facing into them. There's a lot of them, so it looks big and complicated, but really, this part is by far the easiest part. The first stage also has these weird pillars poking out. The sole purpose of these is to make sure the machine knows when it reaches build height. These will hit build height first, before anything else down here, and will basically make sure the rest of this stuff doesn't crash into itself and break. This is the flying machine engine for the second stage. It doesn't look much like an engine right now, but when this thing reaches build height, all of these different parts compress together and form a working engine. This part down here is the engine for the first stage. It's a slightly slower engine that will basically just go up at a slightly slower rate to make sure everything stays in sync. We're going to follow this stage up to the build limit to see how it reacts when it reaches it. We're coming up on the build height limit now. You'll see that these things will begin to compress first, and then everything else will follow. Let's also watch the engine, just to see how it interacts when it reaches the build height limit. Everything is compressed together, and then the engine will begin moving. It's slightly slower than an ordinary flying machine engine, and that's just to keep the second stage together because it needs a slower flying machine. The third and final piece is stage 3, the payload stage. The payload stage is also quite a simple stage. Over here is where the detector rail is, where the hopper minecart would eventually make its way to. This activates a series of systems that eventually launches the payload downwards. Let's watch it in action. So, let's say, the hopper minecart makes its way up to the top of the hill, and it will end up right here and kick off this whole system that starts sending the payload stage downward. The payload is a really simple downwards flying machine. It's actually quite fast, and it detonates when this redstone block becomes parallel with this piece of TNT. Now that that's covered, let's take a look at the flight computer. The flight computer is actually just four modules stuck together, so let's break down three of them and take a look at just one. Alright, so here's a single piece of the targeting computer. As you, can, oops, as you can see when I press this button, it'll change the number on the seven segment display right there. This segment up here is all circuitry for the seven segment display. It's down here that all of the computing actually happens. This little circuit right here basically outputs signal strength equal to the number on the 7 segment display. These chest minecarts are all loaded with a certain number of items in them. This is the thousands place, so each chest minecart has enough items to go 1000 blocks depending on the number you press. This is chest minecart number 1, so it contains the perfect number of blocks for the flying machine to travel 1000 blocks. In a more complete version of the computer, 
all the chess minecarts are above these little tracks like this. When you press the launch button, they'll drop down onto these tracks and into this little holding chamber. And then eventually, once all of them are in there, this this powered rail right here will be pushed forwards, and they'll all be pushed onto this block right here, which moves forwards and pushes all of the chess minecarts directly above this hopper exactly where we need them. Now I'm going to show you what it looks like in action. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this piston right here so that the flying machine doesn't actually start traveling up to build height. I've gone ahead and picked a random number here, 1391, and now we'll go ahead and press the launch button. So, if we go down here, we can see the first few chest minecarts starting, starting to drop down, and they go into the holding chamber right here. Once all of the chest minecarts have made their way into there, this piston will eventually fire, pulling all of them into here. There they go, and they'll drop down onto those honey blocks, and they'll move... Well, that doesn't ordinarily happen, but as you can see, they move directly above the hopper minecart. Now you might be wondering, what's the point of the flight computer? Can't you just put the chess minecarts in place and throw them yourself? So here's the thing, we typed in the number 1391. Now you might think, okay, just put 1391 items into the flying machine, and it'll go that many blocks. Well, actually it wouldn't. If you were to do that, it would actually be a few hundred blocks off and it wouldn't hit its target at all. The computer is actually going to give the flying machine the number 1776. That's because the flying machine doesn't actually go one block per one item put in. It's a little bit off. So the flight computer has to correct for that, running it through a certain equation for it to hit its, ac its target accurately. The exact equation for how many items you should input is 1.29x plus 115, where x is the number of blocks you want the flying machine to travel. So if you want to skip making the flight computer, you can always just use a calculator and do the calculations for yourself. Or if you want to skip right by all that math stuff, you can just use the flight computer. Now I know a lot of you guys just want to get around to playing this thing for yourself, so I'll put the world download down, down, down in the description. Uh, if I remember. If I don't remember, feel free to yell at me in the comments. Well anyways, that's the end of this explanation video. I hope I was able to teach you something, and also that this machine looks a little bit less crazy, complex, and scary. Uh, even though it kind of still does to me, even though I'm the one that made it. But, either way, hope you enjoyed, and for now, goodbye.